Hey, what's up? So what I'm going to go over right now is a little aspect of object-oriented purity, and it's more or less not using if statements. So in a pure object-oriented environment, we want to avoid if statements, conditionals, as much as possible. Maybe in some cases in the far end of the of the spectrum, for lack of a better term, we might use some conditionals, but throughout the main flow of a program, we should avoid using conditionals. So one example I thought of is like with numbers. So here's in my Python REPL shell, here's like a regular addition problem, right? Three plus five, a lot of languages, you type it in just like that, you get the answer eight. Well, this plus sign's an operator, right? And under the seams, it's actually calling Python 3's very, it has a very pure object-oriented implementation for the most part, even though it has a lot of cruft left over from the previous 20 years of its development. Underneath the hood, there's a lot of pure object-oriented implementation. And that's what's going on here is when we run this, what Python is supposedly doing under the hood is it's taking this three and it's some form of a number object. Sorry, my mouse button screwed up. So it kind of like clicks weird. Um, what it does is it, it takes this three, some type of a number object, right? Or an integer. And then it's going to call a plus method called add. And then it's going to pass the value five into that. So in the pure object oriented way, it would look something like this. And these double underscore methods in here that's oh, that's just python's way of having special built-in methods it's just their ugly kind of crafty way of doing that and that way it doesn't really pollute your namespace so the idea in python's not to create your own double underscore methods like that and then they use them so that's kind of their thing so i'm using the built-in python 3 add method and i'm calling that on three I put it in parentheses that evaluates it as, as the object that it is and calls a method on it. And then we pass in five. And if I do that, we should also get eight, just like we did before. So that's, in a nutshell, there we go. The three plus five is the, the sugary version of it with the operator. And that operator Python really just unpeels it to this thing right here, right? And that is ugly. And the idea is, is that if we were writing it ourselves, if there wasn't all this cruft from old languages and everything, we'd create sort of our own little language that wasn't ugly like that. We just have like three plus five. So that's what I'm going to do for the rest of this. I'm going to try and make it as language agnostic as possible. So what's going to be going on is should apply to everything, to like Java and everything. So ideally what we would do is like something like um, three plus five, something that reads a little bit easier like that, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce back over to this and I'm gonna create a class called number. And in Python, the constructor method, just another one of those little crufty names and in Python, another thing is you always pass self if it's an instance method kind of a thing. So that's this is a lot like in Java or something. You'd have like the number constructor and then self is like the this keyword. But in Java and languages like that, it would obviously just put this in the namespace automatically. But in Python, they kind of like expose it a little bit more and show, so you type it longhand. But it's effectively the same thing. So what we're going to do here is that, and we're going to take in, I'll just name the, oh, I'll just name it value, actually. It doesn't matter. I can make up any name I want. And then what we'll do is we'll set the instance value to that value passed in, just like we do a lot of times in other object-oriented languages. So then if I run this and I create a new number, we'll call it num1 equals and this is how you call a constructor in Python. You don't have to use the new keyword, but it's effectively the same thing. And we'll just create a new number one. And now if I go num1, we get an object because now we've created more of that heavyweight object because we're going for object or an impurity. And uh, I know you probably heard a lot about like, don't do that. Don't 
don't create these heavy weights unless you have to. That's the previous 20 or 30 years or whatever of object-oriented programming. Now we're at a time and place, I feel like, where computers have caught up and it's time to start reaping the benefits of object-oriented programming. It's time to no longer be scared about this kind of stuff. So now if I call num1, remember we set the dot value, the value on it, the self dot value in there. So then we get that value one, right? So I could effectively do like num1, I could do this. I know it's longhand and ugly, this isn't the ideal way to do it, but just to show that like, yeah, it works like that. Okay, anyway, we'll bounce back over the code now. Now what we want is like a plus method. So we can do plus, and of course it has to have self because it's an instance method. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the same thing on the other object. So this is the whole point of what I'm getting at right now is that the whole gist of this little presentation is that if we call, I guess I should just maybe do this. It was hard enough to figure out this exact implementation. Really easy to think of once I landed on it. So in object-oriented call it programming, we want to say like three plus five and then get some result, right? So we're going to call like three dot plus parentheses five and then we expect to get a result, but what if we pass a floating point number? Or what if we pass a string for that second value or something? Well, then we would obviously have our little plus thing right here. And we would say like, if, you know, type of is string or, I don't know, I'm not even using the right syntax, right? But we would do all this like, these conditionals and this type checking and stuff. And if you've studied anything about object-oriented purity, um, that's all bad. Like we shouldn't be checking for types. If we, Python especially emphasizes the idea of duck typing, we're better to ask per, or better to ask forgiveness than permission style of a thing. So you go in and you just you call a method on an interface, and that's the idea. Is that like if it provides that those methods, then it can do whatever it needs to do within that context, instead of checking types and lots of conditionals and junk like that. So how can we do that? How can we have this generic plus method where we can add a string, we can add a float, we can add an integer, we can add whatever. So another little trick with this is to keep in mind the idea is that primitive types stay encapsulated within their objects. You never want to pass raw primitive types around. If you, I mean, until the very last inch of the last mile kind of thing, right? So if need be, so that being said, everything should be able to be encapsulated in some type of behavior hidden behind that. Um, so how do we do that? How do we, how do we pull this off? How do we do three plus a string in pure object oriented programming with no if statements? Well, the trick there is to have an interface on all the objects that because if you think about it we already know we're an integer right we already know that we're going to do a 3.0 without the dot zero so we're an integer so we should never have to like wonder about that again so what we're going to do is we're going to call three or excuse me we're going to call add number basically because that's what for this generic example so we'd want to be able to call on that other object call add number so and then we'll give it ourself pass our self object to it our instance so that means that if we give this interface on a string then that string can have an add that string object can have an add number method and then it knows if it gets that number it can do whatever necessary conversions or whatever it knows that it needs to like append a number to itself right And for now, we're just going to do the number method. So right here, I'm going to implement that add number. And then this is going to take an object. What kind of object? It's if it 
this method would be more like a private method, so to speak. Not exactly private, like I guess maybe package private. It's not going to be one that the program at large is probably going to use. That would be plus. You want to be able to use the more generic version. So think of it just like that regular plus operator, like in Python or some other languages, where you can just say like the number three plus a string, and then it will automatically convert three to a string and concatenate those strings. Or if you pass it two numbers, it will automatically perform a numeric calculation and return that value. So if it's getting called to add a number, this is where it gets confusing. It feels like chasing the tail kind of thing. So if it gets called to add a number, then that means it's getting a number. Because that's what we do here. Since we know we're a number, then when we call that other object, we're going to call add number to it. That way we're avoiding that if statement. We're telling it what we are since we already know what we are if we're thinking of ourselves as that number entity. And then when we get the number there, we're going to return um, We're going to return a new number object. You don't have to do this. You could mutate the same object in place. There's a lot of variables with a lot of this, but I'm just trying to keep it simple, direct, and to the point where this should apply in most cases, and of course, at scale, like with a lot of bigger and badder things. And so what we'll do here is we'll take our self.value, and at this point, this is going to be that second number since we're only going to use numbers right now. So if I do like a 3 plus 5, this would be the 5 because on that first one we called, uh, we're calling plus, like if we do 3 plus 5, we'll be calling plus on the 3 object, right? And then it's going to go to that other object, 5, and it's going to add number and send it the 3 object. So then we get here, this will effectively be the, the uh, add number on the 5 object. That's its own self. Now that would be the 5 in this context thinking it out. This will be that three. And then we're going to return a new number object um, with the five dot value, which is will be set up here in the constructor. And uh, self dot value plus number. Oops, number dot value. And of course, like I said, you know, I'm using a primitive right here. I'm going in and going into this number object and getting like a raw property off of it, right? And another thing you probably heard in object-oriented programming is that's not the ideal way to do things. And that's what I said earlier as well. We should never be using primitives except like internally to manipulate our own little instance property kind of things and stuff like that. But in this situation, just to keep it simple, I'm going to do that. This could easily, I could easily go in and add more stuff and make this a value method, you know, things like that, or a get value. I try and avoid getters and setters per se, but, um, but I'm just going to leave it as dot value for now. So just to keep it simplified. But of course, that is something in a totally built out system that should be a behavior, not a property. So that's going to add that to that. All right, let's see. I'm going to save this and I'm going to hit F5. And idle to run it, so I should be able, we'll see, if I go string1 equals, oops, not string1, num1 equals a new number, and we'll just make it 1 to make it line up nice and simple, and then we'll do num2 equals a number, and we'll do 2 there. So now if I do num1, like if we go back and look at that interface, if we do num1 plus and then pass it a two, a num two, then it should, if this all works out and I haven't forgot anything, it should work. So should add, so num one dot plus num two, oops, I gotta do the dot value thing at the end, right? None type has no attribute dot value. Okay, so I screwed up. But anyway, that's, that's exactly what we want right there. And see how well that reads, like num one plus num two, that reads almost as simply as num1 and a literal plus sign and a num2, right? Of course, it's a little crufty because most object-oriented languages are, 
haven't figured that part out yet. Okay, so what I did is I forgot to put the return right here. And I'm glad because when I originally knocked this out, I had forgotten the return statement. So all of these methods are going to need... All these methods really are like Lambda methods for the most part. They're, I don't think in Python that you can use a Lambda method to define or a lambda to define a method in a class like this. I could roll an object out and use lambdas like that. Whatever, it's not that big a deal. So that's what I'm doing here is just the traditional um, function type of a definition approach. But as you can see, it's it could very easily be a lambda, very easily could be a one-liner with an automatic return and all that. Okay, so now this should work, let's see. Num1, num2, okay num1 dot plus num2 dot value boom three so that's working so the num1 dot plus num2 effectively returns that should be returning an object let's see if we get an object yeah there we go so we get the object back so if we don't that value is that little primitive type so in this case, this is the more proper way to do it because then we're returning an object. Like maybe we don't need that value immediately. Maybe we want to calculate it in some spot in the program and then pass it along or something. Or maybe it mutates in place and you know we don't really care about spitting the value back out or whatever. So that's the ideal way to do that. And then if we do want that value, we just tack on the end like like I said, ideally some method that would call up the value in some form, we could make it say like as string if we wanted. As a matter of fact, if we were to do dot value, Python has a built-in method that's kind of like the as string. You just do str, and right there we get it as a string. Which, if we were to call, just in case you're like already known some Python, um, if we were to call that built-in function string and get that same thing, that function right there, which is bad because that's old cruft from the old style of Python, all it does is call that string, that dunder method string under the hood. So we've just removed a layer of indirection. Yeah, I know it's a tacky looking method and everything. That's just the way things turned out in this particular language. But in an ideal language, that could be something else. Like that could be uh, like as string or actually I don't like those kind of like as string or something like num1 plus num2 value as string it just reads like a plain English sentence that's exactly what object oriented programming should do and all we'd have to do if we really cared is go into our stuff in here and add a def as string you know what I mean we could add that and then what that would do is just call string um, self dot value, like something like that, you know. So if we wanted to clean up that interface. Okay, so we're that far, right? That works. It works on itself. It's that simple right there, right? We have that abstract sort of a, it's not, a, I shouldn't say abstract since that obviously means an unimplemented method in object-oriented programming. But what I mean is more general. We have that more general method of plus that reads like we would read that I, that sugared syntax. So that's why I named it like that. And then what that's going to do is call a more specific method on the other object that says, hey, you're getting a number that you need to add to yourself. Handle that however you want. Since we're obviously dealing with the same type of object, it's all right there, right? You know, but now let's create a different type of object and see what that looks like. Excuse me. I just drank a bunch of this stuff. Let me see. That's why I'm burping. It's a uh, Ultima Replenisher. I don't know if you can see that, but I used to like Kool-Aid a lot. And then when all these like rehydration electrolyte drink mixes started coming out, started doing those unsponsored by them. Okay, so we're going to create a string and it's going to have a lot of overlap here. 
Got to have that constructor method, of course, to create it. It's going to take in some value, some sequence of letters, and then we're going to set our self dot value. And if you're thinking, hey, I could extract a super class that has all this redundancy, all these redundant methods like this already built in, and then just inherit from those, you're exactly right. That's a situation where uh, implementation inheritance works really well. And I believe in implementation inheritance like this, like on the fly. I don't think we should go ahead of time and like pre-model everything and be like, oh, you know, create all these class hierarchies. I think just do something like this. And as soon as you notice, like there's a lot of repeat, like, hey, I'm repeating myself. Then go back and refactor to those super classes. Like I try to never create super classes without refactoring to them. It's sort of like empirical proof that I need them. Okay, so... Anyway, and on this one, since it's a string, it's a little bit special case, I would probably, in a little more real-world setting, I would probably make sure and convert the value to a string. Because what if they pass me a number? In Python, with dynamic typing and all that kind of stuff, uh, well, is it dynamic typing, technically? I think it is. Um, you know, somebody could pass a number, and then we'd effectively set the thing as a number, and it's like, I don't know. Anyway, I would probably do something like that just to be a little safer, but moving right along. Then we're going to also have that, we're going to implement the same interface virtually, like, for the most part. And this is how objects should work. The interfaces should be consistent, granular, and consistent. So, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to get another object. And on that other object, we'll make sure and throw in return so we don't end up with that error because we need to re bounce everything back up and spit it out where they asked for it in the program, um, most likely. So we're going to call other dot let me go in here and pause this. All right, my wife got home and I had to use the restroom, so thanks. That should have gone by in no time on your side. Okay, so... So what we have here is we've got to call... Now, since we know we're a string, so when we call in the other object, we're going to say, hey, add a string to yourself. What do you think about that? So add string instead of add number, right? So the, the pattern here is that... Um, that you add your you take your type and you call that on the other object if that makes sense so that other object's going to have basically like pigeonholes for add string add float add integer whatever of course we're using just like the high level number instead of into or integer float kind of thing but yeah we're going to call this and what are we going to pass to it just ourself because we're gonna say hey I'm a string right so it's gonna be like hello in quotes dot um, plus and then a number or another string so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that when it says plus we're gonna come in here and go okay we realize we want to add something well instead of us trying to manipulate the adding and stuff when we don't even necessarily we'd have to like query the other object to find out hey what type are you and how should i handle you maybe things like that instead we're just going to say hey let's keep it simple we already know we're a string so let's just do the same idea on the other object and just say hey add a string to yourself and what do you how do you like that okay so if we do that now there is no add string on the numbers right well let's start with the string same thing like we did for the numbers. Let's just do it for itself for now. So we'll add an add string method here, get that working. And it's going to get past itself and then the other. And if it gets past the other, we know it's going to be a string at this point. So I'll just even label it more specifically because the only time this interface is going to get called is when a string basically, when another object wants to hmm yeah get another tail chasing thing let me check my notes down here and double check I'm doing it right yeah 
yeah, the only time this method should be called is when a, a string is basically calling itself. So I can't wrap my mind around that. I've already gone through this several times. I was thinking about it for days, like when I would go to sleep at night. And then one day I woke up and I forgot how how this worked. And I had to remember. And I was like, okay, I better take some notes and like do a screencast about this so that like it's documented. Okay. And then in this situation, we just simply want to create a new string object which of course you don't have to, but that's what I'm going to, that's the pattern I'm sticking to. And then we're going to take that since it called plus on our original string on our first string. And then we're adding that to a second string. This is effectively our first string because it got past itself, right? I know it's a little confusing in the Python syntax, but this self is passed by the environment automatically, right? So when it calls this one, this is the self of that first object. And then when we get in here, that actually becomes that variable, the string, and this one gets passed in by the environment. So that's what's going on there. So what we wanna do is we wanna take that first string that the plus got called on because it would be the first in sequence, right? You know, whatever plus another thing. So this is that whatever. So we want that whatever first string dot value plus um, and that other string is this string that we're in context we'd be in right now calling the method on because we took other and we called add string so that's where we ended up here and that's what this self is is this other that's basically what it does is when you call a method it just takes that and pits it there so that becomes self so we know that would be the second one right so we're gonna say self dot what I put on my notes make sure I'm doing this all the same way yeah what I did in my notes is I actually um I put a space in here you can use single quotes too in Python I'll just use doubles since it's more language agnostic um, self dot value that's optional this is just design taste or whatever that I'm using okay so now we should be able to add two strings together I believe Let's see, let's run it. So now if I create string one equals a new string and it will be, we'll just call it string one so that it's easy to remember. And then we'll do a string two, same thing pretty much. And excuse me, so now we'll go string one dot plus string two and we got that object okay well now let's tack that value on there bam there it is string one plus string two in the right order so so far so good but the problem is is what if we were to do two different types against each other as you notice here if we call if we do a plus and a string we're gonna call add number we don't have add number down here on this string and vice versa, if we do a plus on the string and pass it a number, um, there's no add string method on this other, on this number object. So we need to add, we need to fill out the interfaces. Oops. Say def add string up here. So when we get this one, in this instance, this will mean like whenever we call these methods, this add number, add string, whatever object gets that is going to be the second object in sequence or the third or whatever. It's going to be after the object that called it. So that's something to take into consideration. So right here we were saying add string, we're going to get a self and we know that self is going to be a string because we're getting called. We know it's a string that called us with this because this isn't like a, a general as much of a general purpose method right this is more specialized okay so then we're going to want to remember to return and we're going to go string dot here's the tricky part maybe I'll just do it and let it play out so if we call string dot add number and then we pass it ourselves 
and it's like nice this is looking really easy and like it's all making sense like a grand unified theory add number but you could probably see where it's going self and then this is going to be a number for the same reasons as above and return um, So what we'll do is we'll return. So if we get a number, that means the number was second. So does it? Does it mean the number was second? Yeah, it should mean that. So we're going to return a string. And it's going to have our self dot value plus. I'm kind of cheating the system, obviously, with like the plus and the operators in here, like in a totally pure object oriented system we'd have a really clean clean interfaces top to bottom bottom to top whatever and uh you know we wouldn't need to use any operators in my opinion like an op a pure object oriented programming language would have none but that could be argued too like you could just name a method as an operator in my ideal mind about that okay so self dot value da 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 and then we're going to take the number number dot value and that would just be a raw value in Python. I don't think Python would automatically convert it to a string. JavaScript would, whatever. So we can just say on that, we can call that to string method to make sure and convert it to a string. Okay, let's check out where we're at. So if we go num1 equals number one and string one equals And we'll just call it, we'll just say that. That's the string for one. Okay. So if we do num one dot plus, just double check real quick. Uh, num one dot value. That's still working. So string one plus itself. And that's working. Okay. Now let's try like num one dot plus. Um, string one and we got an object back that's good let's check out the value one hey it's working right let's try the other way let's try string one dot plus num one this could go bad got an object oh it's out of order it's working but it's out of order so it should be Wait, that is right. This one was out of order. My bad. I didn't catch that at first. So yeah, this one's in order. This is the way it should be. String one, that uh, one, plus num one, and then there's our num one, right? And then right here, obviously, we have num one, but they're out of order. Okay, so let's go back over here and take a look. So what's going on here is that whenever we call add number, which we're calling right here, whenever we call that, the order's fixed. And we don't want to do an if statement. We don't want to start getting all crufty with how many parameters we take. Ideally, you know, one or none for parameters. You know, if you got to start passing multiple parameters, one of the code smells is if you put a parameter that's like a flag. So if we did like a, you know, an after flag or something like that and made it true or false, Stuff like that is a code smell. What we really should be doing is we should create a more specific method that we can call in such instance. So if we go back over here and we look, oops. If we look where it screwed up was when we had the number first, right? So that means in number, we need to add, uh, we wanna be able to call an after. Because if this is getting called to add a string on itself, then that means we've called num1 or some number object, right? And then we've called the plus method on that. I'm confusing myself now. The reason it needs to come after, yeah, we've called, we've had num1, we've called itself, and then we come over here and we call add number. 
Hmm. Why is that coming out like that? Num1, it calls plus, which calls add number on string. Okay, yeah, that's right. And then string flips them. So we need, we're needing to create another method on string down here. Of def add number after. Call it different things if you want, of course. And then we're going to return. We're going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to flip the values. And number dot value as a string concatenated with uh, our string value. Okay. Yeah, and then when we go this, we're going to call that add number after because in this case, why did this happen like this? What do I have in my notes here? Add number after. Where am I calling add number after? Why does this not make sense in my brain right now? I know it's the right way, but it's just not lining up. So number, we call plus on number, that calls add number on string and it passes it the value one and it just simply prints it in the wrong order okay I think I got it now always a good trick right to just walk through line by line or expression by expression on the code alright double checking over that it looks good I'm gonna save it and run it Get back up there to our definition. There's string one, number one. Okay, so now what was the problem? It was um, num1 plus string one dot value. Still doing that, huh? Got to be kidding me. I'm going to check it against my notes real quick. One thing I had to do too, I'm recording this at 720, so everything's kind of squashed in. I like to do that so that it just otherwise it will end up too small if somebody's watching it like 720 or lower so I kind of make myself do that but for this one I have to admit I had to like to finish typing it out I actually had to go back to 1080 to where I could see both uh, classes on the screen at once to kind of wrap my head around it so what do I have here return string dot add number after self that's all right according to my notes and then we come down here, string number dot value. Self dot value. So this one should be number dot value first. Hmm. Okay, so that's where I'm getting backwards, I guess. What? That just does not make any sense. Oh, okay. Chasing the tail. So this add string is only going to get called, this one right here on the number object, it's only going to get called if string calls it, right? I'm thinking backwards in my head. Okay. So add number after, which here I'm obviously adding number before. <laughs> this is one of those things, if I go back and review the video, I'm going to be like, how dumb. How did I not see that when I sat there and read that method name out loud 50 times? Okay. And then right here, we've got to flip this one. Value. Okay. This should do it. I think we're there. So don't feel bad. I mean, the idea is it's a, like, if you can't wrap your head around it that easy, it's a totally simple concept. Like when I was laying there in bed and I came up with it, I probably came up with it while I was awake, but thought about it in bed or whatever. But um, 
it was like so simple. It, it was just so simple. Like I said, I didn't even write it down or anything. And then when I forgot it, I realized like, hey, there's maybe a little bit more to this. And it was one of those things where I was tempted to just hit record and start doing a screencast. Thank God I didn't. And because uh, it's already turned out bad enough, even when I have like my notes right in front of me and everything. But yeah, I thought, well, maybe I should try and hammer it out. And it took me like at least an hour, I would say, to of doing more or less what I'm doing right now and running into a lot of the same problems. Anyway, did it not? Okay, let me copy. Okay, and then we'll do. All right, there we go. Now our numbers in front, like it should be. Now let's test it the other way, obviously. Start string one plus num one. Drum roll. Boom, there it is. Okay, so that's that. That there's no if statements in here, even though we can add or plus a string onto a number or a number onto a string or a number onto a number or a string onto a string. There's no if statements here whatsoever. It's just all pure. And in hindsight, I think it's pretty clear, right? So anyway, feel free to add a comment on whatever platform you're watching this on if you have a question or just want to tell me how stupid I am if I forgot something or whatever and one of the things I think is beneficial of this too is because if you notice like C++ these so-called object-oriented programming languages they still can never get as fast as like the slightly lower level modular languages and stuff and it's like why not and there's always like these layers of indirection I think but with this, if you think if you go even lower down to like assembly machine language and stuff and branch prediction, if you have those if statements, then it's almost like random, right? Unless you do like heavy profiling and dynamic runtime stuff and everything. Um, but if it's just like a statically compiled language or just a language that doesn't have a very intensive type of a system, just in time system or whatever, it it's not it's going to have to do like random branch prediction and then if it screws up on that branch prediction it's going to have to throw out the cache and all that and that turns into a mess like once when you really add up the numbers and delays especially in time critical code that that's a huge deal but with this there as far as i can tell let me know if i'm wrong there's like there's zero branch prediction it knows it should be able to load the cache up and know exactly where it's going you know, even if there is an extra layer of indirection in there, it, it, it doesn't matter. That cache line is going to be loaded with that. And it's just, it effectively, even though there, there are jumps, which you could say are branches, um, they're not conditional jumps. So there's no prediction necessary. It's so straightforward. So it simplifies the code. Ultimately, it's kind of like recursion, almost like one of those things where, for me, recursion is hard to wrap my head around half the time. I end up in situations like this where I'm like, oh, this should be so easy. But once you get used to it or, you know, get around it or whatever, then I think it's just, I mean, just look how simple those interfaces are. So, yeah, that's object-oriented purity, just one little aspect of it, of maybe if we do have the opportunity to design our own interfaces, or if you're thinking about building your own language or whatever, you might take that into consideration. Thanks a lot for watching.